welcome students to Monk Meditation. The show about monks in the world of Warcraft. Big news coming out of BlizzCon. Our class review shows a new dawn. Brewmasters get Fuzon. Fistweaving is just gone. And there's sweets from Celestalon. Coming up on Monk Meditation, episode 60. Here's your host, Chai T. Thank you for joining us. Grab some brews, settle in, because it's going to be a very long night. I'm Chai T from Airy Peak U.S., Mistweaver, and the Rolling Thunder team of Converter Raid. With me tonight is our regular crew, all pumped up with the deluge of information we got since the last show. Let's check in with them now. First off, covering the Mistweaving side of things from Midwinter on Sargeras U.S., Monkeyo. How are you doing, sir? How are you doing? Oh, is that me? I guess that's me. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. There's so much information. And there was so much stuff on both sides of it, but I guess uh, for me, it's just going, recovering from BlizzCon, just all the, not just all the information, all the people that I met, but actually recovering uh, health-wise from BlizzCon. <laughs> it was too much fun, and it's having that, you know, you got that high and then the low, but it was a really good high, so it was totally worth it. Absolutely. All right, next, helping us understand our combo breakers live from the U.S. for the first time ever on the show, Air, how you doing, sir? It's good! I'm back in the USA! Um, again, yeah, BlizzCon happened. Um, if you guys thought I was excited before about <laughs> stuff, I, I'm surprised that camera can, like, focus right now. I'm just, like, literally a thousand, like, jitters, not jitters, jitters. You're getting used to the combo I strikes, I, right? I can't even talk. I'm trying to combo my words right now, and it's not working. Windwalkers, we are in for some fun. It's good times. I'm glad to be here. All right, and covering the Brewmasters, our very own Grumpy Cat, adding a pinch of salt into the brew. Le Blue, how you doing, sir? Doing good, and I'm not eating salt again. No, <laughs> learned. Um, feels good. It's it's been oh gosh, it feels like it's been forever for me to be here, outside of uh, moderating the chat to ensure that it was just it was very constructive and good. Um, because that's what I did in Dojo. I made sure it was constructive. Uh, <laughs> we finally finally got Gorefiend on Friday. Finally. Uh, 300 and... What was that? 60-something? 30-something? <laughs> Way too many wipes on Gorefiend. Finally got him. And then we spent this morning wiping to Sakrathar. So I was back in my happy place because I knew, I knew what it felt like to wipe. <laughs> um, otherwise, just been kind of... Watching BlizzCon news and processing it, discussing it with people, and kind of trying to figure things out. But we'll get into that, won't we? Indeed, we will. Well, I hope mm -hmm. so. All right. So, Aaron Monkey, you guys were both at BlizzCon. Did you guys meet anybody from the dojo? Um, we let's see. Who's in, who's in the dojo? BlizzCon hats. See the hats first. Yep. Let's see the show up the hats. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. There, there was a monk picture that happened, and yeah. I got to meet a lot of the, the, you know, some of the. I got to meet, you know, the, the, the mainstays, the monk community, calligraphy, rotund, uh, Hina lover. Monkey, yeah, we were gonna. I got to meet this guy. <laughs> we were gonna, you know, have someone else in the picture, but they forced us to just wait. Yeah. He never showed up. Yeah. That's the name was just wait. Oh, I see what you did there. What a, yeah. what a dirty. We, we tried really hard. Dirty monk. Yeah. yeah. But no, it was, it was awesome being able to, to meet a lot of people who, um, so, you know, some people who watch the show. Um, hello, Joey Giggles. Nice to see you. Oh, hey, Joey. Yeah. yeah. Um, nice and, you know, have people come talk to us and everything. Uh, at this kind of just being among the community and all the people who play not only monk, but the other classes, because I guess there's 35 other specs and Windwalker and. I guess yeah. uh, thirty three other than just monks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so no, it's just good to be there, and it's great to to see. You no, know, it's a, the honor and the greatest of pleasures to be there with Mister Monkeyo. So yeah. Oh, the feeling was certainly likewise, and Eric uh, dressed in his nice uh, pink. Was it hot pink or very bright red? It was uh, a very very bright, bright red, red jacket. Uh, a fleece very, jacket that cost. very easy to spot him. And I stayed with him mostly so that you know people could find us. Like, <laughs> Look for the beacon of air, and that's what it was. It was just no. It, that's what BlizzCon's about, right? It's about meeting yeah. all those people, and you know monks as well. It was really nice to see everybody, but just so many people. It was what I was most excited about, and I wasn't disappointed. 
and, and I'm not forgetting about Sunnier either. Sunnier, yes, hi. Sunny. I know you might be watching, but I, it was awesome to meet totally you. forgetting about nice her. To meet you totally not. Totally not. Totally forgetting about her. Totally not. Oh. <laughs> yep. Next year, I will learn how to read calendars so we can actually set up a good time for the monk picture. <laughs> It seems like a valuable skill yeah. to have. I'm not really going to bash on your time reading skills at the moment. <laughs> at the moment. At the moment. At the moment. <laughs> yeah. Yesterday, that would have been Work a totally other uh, thing. Yeah. Totally fine complaint. All right. All right. Well, it's time to get caught up in the crazy whirlwind of WoW news, and there sure is a lot of it this time in. Dizzy haze. We're out of the drought of information and into yeah. the deluge. BlizzCon 2015 happened, obviously, and we learned some interesting things at BlizzCon uh, and then a ton of stuff after. So let's talk about what we did learn at BlizzCon. Artifact weapons. We finally figured out what the Brewmaster and the Windwalker was. So Brewmaster gets Fuzan, the Wanderer's Companion. What do you think about that, LeBlue? Um, You know, at first I saw it was a staff. Um, and I was kind of like, eh, staff. But then if you read a little bit, it's uh, crafted from the first of Pandaria's forests. So it's Pandaland lore. And if you don't like Pandaland lore, you can get out. <laughs> but really, um, basically it's Freya's staff, who she gave to uh, Yulon, who then gave it to the Monkey King. Um, and I actually think the Monkey King is kind of a cool character, personally. Yeah. Because I like Hosen, and I think flinging poop, poop is hilarious, even though I don't personally partake in said actions. Um, so once I kind of like looked at it from that angle, and then if you know anything about like Monkey King in real world, like a lot of the like stories and stuff behind that, I'm kind of like, you know, that's kind of cool. That makes sense. Drunk monkey got his, I got a stick, and then uh, I, I was a little disappointed at first when I looked at it because it looks a lot like Gens. our base staff. Like you get the at the peak of serenity or when you're leveling your monk. Um, but when you upgrade it, it gets that keg. And then a couple of the reskins, they do a couple interesting things with that keg aspect One of, of the tweets also indicated that that keg is actually going to be part of the animation. So part of the attack, yes. the keg is going to be swinging around. I saw hit. that, and that has me excited. Yeah. The only thing that could make me more excited is if I had a keg on my side like Chen does. Right. That's like the only thing. But uh, So... I was kind of expecting a polearm. I'm not. I can't. I can't say that I'm sad that we got the Monkey King staff, though. I think that's pretty cool. Yep. So I'm. I'm excited to get my hands on it. All right. Speaking of staffs, we did know already. Shay Loon staff of the Miss is going to be what uh, the Miss Weaver is, but we get a little bit further lore in on this. Uh, Monkeyo, what do you think of wielding Shay Loon? Yeah, I'm not too uh, excited about the lore of the staff. I. I'm a big Transmog fan. Transmog's not a thing in this game. If, if if Transmog were no longer a thing in this game, I would not be playing it. It's that important. So you to must me. have Fair you point. must have been screaming like a little girl at the Transmog oh, stuff from the. Dude, oh, that was my jam, dude. I was I was excited about that. Um, but this staff, like the some of the you know upgrade versions of it, like the 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 base version of it's really nice and it looks really good. But some of the upgrade versions are crazy good. Like especially like the crane one, mm -hmm. uh, the Chigi version that looks amazing, and the Shaw one looks just so good. I I, I don't know which one Shaw of them is going to be PvP. So Probably that yeah. kind of makes sense. I didn't think about where you'd get these things from. So I mean, it's gonna oh my god, I can't wait. And recently, I don't know if you were holding this for later, but. People were wondering that if the staff is going to sit like we, we have staff sitting right. now where they're upside yeah. down. The top is on it's the like back, we have this yeah. magical like floating bell that's just going to defy gravity, but they made it so that staffs are going to sit properly on monks now, uh, which is on great. every class, they said they oh, changed yeah. a complete like nice. animation for it. Right. Oh, yeah, Monk so has excited. had a Change lot of problems games. with uh, with animations and how weapons yeah. sit, and they're yeah. fixing the Windwalker stuff too. So the fists, yeah. well, okay. you'll actually be able to see the fists. So, and speaking what? of fists, that's fists. good because what? our artifact weapon is fists, fists of the heavens. Transition, right? So, fists of the heavens, as described, is in the hands of a master martial artist. They're lethal against any foe infused by the raw elemental powers. Now, this is the only artifact weapon of the monk that does not come from Pandaria. Yeah. So because he's, he's fine with that. No, 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 no. Al Akira. Al Akir. Akir. Yeah, that guy. 
Who doesn't love that zone? That is the most beautiful zone in the game, just about. The great music, great bosses, and wind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of wind up there. <laughs> wind walkers. We, were, we know where we're getting a wind from. Air about it. It does. Oh. No, I mean, we were we were talking about this last time that we we're gonna have some kind of a fist weapon. It just makes sense. But what did throw us for a bit of a loop is it's not tiger claws. They're claws, but they're wind claws. Right. So the the lore so. of it's pretty cool. Is that the mm-hmm. it was infused with Alakir, but he infused it so powerfully that out of spite, essentially, that when it actually got used, destroyed a city. <laughs> yeah, destroyed yeah. the city and got lost to the ages. So apparently the Windwalkers are going to be hunting around Oldham, digging in the sand, trying to find a, a couple of claws. Hopefully they bring yeah. uh, Harrison Jones into it at all, because I, I would love to relive that, personally. Yeah. You know, Maybe we got to do some gnome obliteration at the same time. Who knows? I'm going to go punt the Sorry. little uh, little mini guys, too, just for fun. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's a really neat idea, and some of the the ideas that or the the art that they've shown for look really neat. They're going to be fixing a lot of the animations for them. Um, and one of the things they said is we're actually going to have our own custom sheathing animation. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if they're going to have like us pick them off with our hands and like you know daintily put them down. I don't. Who knows? <laughs> we got to see this. Where's the beta? But yeah, it's exciting. Very exciting. And another bit of news that came out of BlizzCon is uh, Tri-Spec. And we will, oh, now, yeah. will now be able to be monks instead of a specific spec. However, as someone pointed out, we are going to be gated by our artifact weapons. So it's not like you're going to be able to just wander around and do all three all the time. Mm. Yeah. Um, you're going to be severely weakened on your third one and somewhat weakened on your second one. So they, they said it was possible to keep up with two, but it's going to take a lot of work. I think it's going to be pretty much impossible to keep up with three. Yeah, it's, so instead I'm of making an up, alt, though. you're going you're gonna to play your... Instead of making a healing alt, you know, or a second tune of the same class to do everything, right. um, you're going to do this. So it, it's, you know, about the same amount of work it probably sounds like. They, they did say that... I, I, I mean, I remember him saying they'll have a catch-up for, like, alternate specs. Right. Like, it won't yeah. be as bad. But it's they'll still be a bit of a good yeah, bit of work. Yeah, the further along so. you are uh, in the in the first one, the easier it is for the second and third. So as time goes on, you get near the end of the the patches, you get near the end of the expansion. It's going to be a lot easier for that third spec to catch up. So we'll see how easy that is. Right. Yes. it's always been the thing. Like you know, we have catch up mechan- mechanisms right now with the ring, and it's still like, oh, I have to do this again. Yeah, we'll see. But it's still less work than the first time he did it. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, let's get into the meat of this, the class preview. And it's now My time goodness. to keep your spirits up while the world changes around you in... The sky is falling! The sky is falling! Uplift. Don't worry. I'm sure it happens to other monks, too. And for some specs, it does seem like the sky is falling, but... Oh, God. For first... Luckily, the Windwalkers will be the wind underneath your specs. Yes. Let's talk Windwalkers. So, they went okay. into class fantasy, and the fantasy they're going for, the monk, is the martial artist with mystical chi powers. And of note to that is that we are now the only spec that has and uses chi. Yeah. That's interesting. No, no wind anything in there about that but nope. yeah we're martial arts masters not necessarily suplex masters which we, a bit disappointing <laughs> to be honest but yeah we, we, that, we keep that still chi. could be a talent energy and chi still we are we are keeping energy and chi which right. is which is the old familiar you know so we got we got that going for us to start and now the biggest change that we're going to come into is our new mastery we finally get rid new of mastery. this whole tiger eye brew thing with the mastery and we're instead of going to move into combo strikes yeah. So, so go ahead. Yeah, combo strikes. Which, which, it's an interesting idea in that our abilities will deal more damage when they're not repeated. Now, what they say specifically is that it'll actually be 25% more damage with mastery from typical gear. Um, so, if we don't repeat, you know, if we do blackout kick. Wait, no. If we, yeah, if we do blackout kick and rising sun kick. Mr. Fury, the next, you know, they'll, that's 25% extra damage. 25% extra damage. Blackout kick. Blackout click. <gasps> oh no. 
Oh no. We, it, we lost the damage. Right. So yeah, it's really, really neat. It's it's combos. It's it's interesting. So another thing it that they did. Our rotation. Yep, this is gonna completely change our rotation, which is I think it's gonna be really fun. That's gonna be the main play style. Yeah. So to go into other playstyle changes, jab is gone. Bye bye jab. That was kind of a, goodness. Yeah, it was kind of a boring ability just used to generate uh, chi, and so they combined mm -hmm. it with Tiger Palm. So now Tiger Palm is your jab. Uh, they've moved it back up to 50 energy from the 45, so they're trying to ram that in again like they were in alpha. We'll see whether that sticks. Uh, so it's going to do minor damage and generate two chi. Uh, also is going to have an 8% chance to make your next blackout kick cost no chi. Hey, what's missing from that Tiger Palm um, hit? Tiger Power. Yeah. Oh boy. No longer they've, they've removed Tiger Power. No armor debuff anything anymore. Mm -hmm. Gone. See ya. And finally, Armor Pen is gone from the game. <laughs> right. A couple expansions later. <laughs> Took a little bit. Yeah. So uh, the devs did want to spe say that although Tiger Palm is being, uh, being 50 energy, it looks like it may slow down the spec. The goal is for the Windwalker to be close to GCD capped. Uh, focus is going to be on keeping the abilities flowing to maximize <laughs> usage of mastery. Um, that's exciting. We, we get the Street Fighter play style. We get the Street Fighter combos. We're going to have a Street Fighter UI at some point. Guarantee it. Some yes. talented person is listening to us right now, and they're already working on creating it. So See, kudos Zhen, to you. Zwen is going to suplex the train into us, and we're going to beat up the train as a bonus stage to get more damage. I think that's, that's going to be a car, dude. It's going to be a car sitting near the, <laughs> well, near the edge near of like, the, the ocean. Yeah. It's a train yeah, car. <laughs> train car works for yeah. me. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so, See, they've also looked like they're changing blackout kick. Yes, yeah, so they're reducing it from 2 chi back to 1. Uh, and that's mm. it. So you don't get the dot. It doesn't look like they mm. have the dot. No, no dot? Knows? What? I think someone mentioned that there was going to be a healing option for that. But mm. I, don't, I don't know if it's in a glyph. Would, or something, but uh, there's yeah. no glyph though. That's like I guess that was technically a minor glyph glyphs. before. Yeah. So I guess they could keep that as a minor no. glyph. Uh, so Probably, there may yeah. still be a dot, may just be a healing thing. It doesn't say, so we we'll don't know. Yeah, nothing, nothing said yet. Yeah. So rising sun kick, we still have that. Uh, however, the uh, the debuff that gets placed is gone. The twenty percent extra damage gone. Right. So that's gone. So we still get the healing uh, debuff, um, mm -hmm. but. The whole purpose of this, the playstyle, they're trying to make it so you're not managing your dots all over the place, and you're not managing your debuffs. You're paying attention to your combo strikes, and that's about it. It's like simplifying the playstyle. It's making it easier to pick up, but at the end, we'll talk about what that actually means for the spec say. So, right. Because it's definitely going to have some some interesting repercussions. Yeah, so Fist, um, of, Fury, Fist of Fury... Yeah, they've... Uh, They've gone ahead and just baked in the glyph, so you can channel it while moving. Uh, it can be talented in PvP to still have the stun, uh, but otherwise the stun is gone, so no more stunning adds. And uh, let's see, spinning crane kick. This is a big change. It's no longer going to be energy-based. It's going to be chi-based. So you're going to spend your chi on doing AoE uh, with uh, spinning crane kick. And I'm assuming if they keep rushing Jade Wind, it will be the same. Yeah. So you can think, imagine Tiger Palm... Spinning Crane Kick, tiger, tiger Palm, Rising Sun Kick, Tiger Palm, Spinning Crane Kick. You know, that's to help with the, the new combo Mastery strikes, setup. Yeah. You know, to help with the whole, you know, combo breaker thing going. Yeah. And, um, you know, wh while we are at the Dev Dark Moon Fair chat, my bright red fleece <laughs> drew the eye of Mr. Scott Johnson. He came over and asked me a question. And I asked the devs, Mr. Celestalon, in, uh, Specifically, what's going on with Storm, Earth, and Fire? He looked me in the eye and told me some great news. Storm, Earth, and Fire, we no longer have control over. It's a toggle on, it's a toggle off. They will do kick punching. They will be easier to use. The number one thing that keeps Windwalkers from doing any kind of DPS or doing the wrong DPS or people looking at the spec and going... No, it's going away. So yeah, it's it's neat. It's um, it's uh, interesting change. Yeah, there's and... gonna be a lot of people that are disappointed in the loss of control over this. Yeah. Uh, but not too many. 
I, I think pretty much all of the major people are like, this was a real pain in the butt to actually use properly, so good riddance. You um, know, top-level monks are, are, are upset about the loss of control because it will impact that. It'll, it'll make it more difficult in that sense to separate yourself from, you know, an average monk, as it were. But for all the people we talk to who do a lot of, you know, LFR rating, normal rating, lower-level heroics, and even at high level that don't quite understand how to get this, the fact that you need separate UI, a separate weak aura to even use this, that you need to create macros to make this useful, it's not the kind of game that Blizzard is wanting to make. They're not, they don't want it to be that difficult. So this is going to solve a lot of that. And the issue that we always had a problem is, you know, is do the clones dynamically update? You know, do they keep our Tiger uh, Palm? Do they keep our Rising Sun Kid debuff? You know, all yeah, that kind of stuff. It's kind of moot anyways. Doesn't matter anymore, you know? Um, we still don't know why Tiger's Eye Brew some other stuff. Um, but speak, speaking of Tiger's Eye Brew... Yeah, we did find out Tiger's Eye Brew is no longer a uh, generation type thing. It is instead a 1.5 minute cooldown. So, yeah. Interesting. Good. So now what's awesome is we can start the fight and actually be doing our full <laughs> damage. This no more great. brain to RNG Jesus. Yes. So that's neat. <laughs> we don't know about the expel harm gameplay yet. Um, that has not been answered. Um, hopefully that if goes away. If we even have it, yeah. Yeah. But um, no, it's, it's very interesting um, that, that they're changing that. You know, again, another very important thing to mastering a Windwalker in today's game is being, being a bit more simpler. Um, and we'll see how that affects things overall. Yeah, so um, it, it definitely seems like the overall <clears throat> guideline for what they're trying to do with the Windwalker is to get more depth of gameplay with less complexity. So the mastery to com changing the mastery to combo strikes, removing the debuff, buff tracking, we've had to manage with Tiger Power, Rising Sun Kick, and Tiger Eye Brew, is, it's all gone. They reduced complexity of Storm Earth and Fire, but it's made it a more engaging gameplay with the combo strikes, having to actually keep in keep knowledge of what your next ability is going to be, yep. uh, keeping that rotation going to maximize the DPS. Now, let's talk about the ease of rotation. With, it, with these new abilities, how easy is it going to be to keep combo strikes going? We'll see how fast energy regeneration is, how much downtime there is, what our talents are going to be. Um, you know, they've been talking a lot about talents are really going to be changing your gameplay. Right. Um, so we don't have all the spells yet. We don't know what's going to count for that, you know, as a damaging ability or what's not. You know, if Expel Harm doesn't do damage anymore, let's just say, does that count as an ability that counts as part of the rotation in that sense? Could you do Tiger Palm, Expel Harm, Tiger Palm, and have it count? We don't know. You know, we have to see that, I guess. Do we know if, like, Combo Strikes is, like, a buff, like, has a timer? Or if it just applies to your next spell. Uh, we don't know that either. Yeah, we, we just know that how the mastery is going to be working is yeah, that every time yeah. it doesn't apply, you know, it, the next ability will do more damage. Right. And one of the things that they're, they're talenting for is an additional um, hit combo passive that says every time you do um, uh, an ability that doesn't repeat, it also does a 1% stacking damage increase up to That's 10 times. Sense. So yeah, if you can manage to keep it going, then it buffs it from the, what is it, 25% to 35%, and that can go up with mastery. Something so, like that. So those who can really master this and not mess up that often, they're going to, uh, I, yeah, Monkey was like, I saw what you did there. Completely unintentional. It's pretty good. I don't, I don't miss those things. It's good. <laughs> so someone who can truly master this combo strikes will be able to do significantly more damage. And that's the, the whole yep. purpose of the gameplay. Instead of like, all right, who's going to be best at managing the Storm Earth and Fire, Tiger Power, Rising Sun Kick, Fist of Fury Rotation, uh, Tiger Eye Broom Generation, and Usage. It, mm -hmm. It's a lot less to keep track of, but I think a lot more fun. So overall, I'm really yeah. excited for the Windwalker changes. One of the things that I think they're doing is, you know, there's always a big difference between the, the low-level Windwalkers and the really high-level Windwalkers. Mm -hmm. And I think what they're doing now is they're raising the skill floor. You know, they're making it a lot easier to play and do a baseline damage, but still really allowing for that really top-level, um, top player to distinguish themselves with how they manage these high level things right um because you'll be penalized quite heavily if you mess up will you though 10 percent, 10 percent if you're, you're if you're taking that talent. 10 gcds 
if well, you yeah, are yeah, taking we don't the talent, the we ones. don't know what the other talents are. For someone who's yeah. not quite as good, there may be another one that does, you know, raises your overall damage, something like that, that might be better. Yeah. Now, the nice thing about the mastery is that if you screw up, you just screwed up for one ability. The yeah, second right. you do your next ability, you're back on track. Um, mm -hmm. Except for if you took that talent, obviously. So I kind of like that because it, it doesn't penalize you screwing up very much, but if you screw up a lot, that's really going to hurt. Um, that's fair. Yep. Yeah. Maze. Good yeah. design. There's, 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 there's a lot of neat things coming from this, and I'm just I'm, I'm personally really happy that the devs have specifically talked about the fast paced gameplay. You know, they want to keep mm. that. They want us to use, you know, an arcade stick to play Windwalker. I'm excited about that. So um, I'm glad they're, they're going to try to do their best to continue with that. And I'm ready for the ice packs for my wrist. It's going to be good. Right. Be good. <laughs> yeah, Hina Lover did want to point out that he checked at BlizzCon on the, the tier 30 talents will count towards combo strikes. So you can use oh, that sweet. to mix into your rotation as well. Oh, thank you, Hina Lover. That's good to hear. All right, let's move on. And yeah, to, we don't know what's we don't. Yeah, yeah Let's, we let's move on to Brewmaster, so uh, LeBlue can have something to talk about. <laughs> yeah, talk? I I talk. <laughs> so the fantasy of the Brewmaster is designed to be a drunken brawler, uh, erratic movement, difficult to hit, and when you do, you're not sure if they actually felt it. And that's something that they got away from, they strayed from in this expansion in particular, with the uh, emphasis on guard that this uh this has been so what what do you think about that Leblu? uh yeah the the well we can't balance stagger so we're gonna nerf into the ground and then we need to prop it up with guard kind of uh went very far away from that um and they're kind of taking the fantasy and a from a different angle i guess if you want to say it that way um stagger is actually Stagger hopefully will once again apply to all mechanics. Um, now that it's not our base stagger is, if that we have any base stagger, I'm assuming we do. Uh, it's not re increased by mastery. Uh, our mastery is now going to be elusive brawler, which every time you're hit by a melee attack, you gain a percentage of dodge until your next successful dodge, and that's going to be based on your mastery. So if you have say 10% base from agility or whatever, and you have 20% mastery. You have 10, you get hit, now you have 30, you get hit, you have 50, and it keeps going, which makes it relatively consistent. I wouldn't say it makes it wholly consistent, um, but you will eventually dodge something, or you'll die. But um, the only boss this really, I, I have like a problem with this on, is bosses where the auto attack swings are the main danger of the fight. Tyrant Velhari kind of comes to mind. Because your mastery isn't something you count on, um, unless you, you know you've eaten a bunch of externals and stuff, and now you're like, well, I got hit this many times, so now I'll dodge one. But it's not something I particularly care to ca uh, count on. But it's something that we'll have to see play out in gameplay with the rest of their toolkit. Um, they are refocusing on stagger with and bruise for that matter, since we don't have chi anymore. Our main resource is bruise and their cooldowns. Um, and that is in the form of Iron Skin Brew and Purifying Brew. And these both share the charges for each other. So gone are the days of just popping Serenity or something and taking big old fat hits and then instantly purifying them for 10 seconds and taking like no damage. Um, Iron Skin Brew increases your stagger by 60%. Keeping in mind, of course, that... 50% of stagger does work on magic damage as well. So it's actually... a an extra 30% magic reduction, sort of, in that vein. Um, and then Purifying Brew clears your stagger. Uh, this definitely makes it so that we're more keen on smoothing out the damage, and then you as a player need to decide when you need to purify it, if you need to purify it, because uh, it does last for six seconds. So your stagger will be ticking hard, but the initial hits per the, you don't know if you hit them or not, will be very minimal. I mean, we're talking, if we have base 20% stagger, you're taking 20% of the hit up front, and then the rest of the 80% over 10 seconds, which is a lot more manageable. Um, it's a very powerful spike prevention tool. Um, we didn't hear anything about, or I'm sorry, Expo Harm was removed for Brewmasters. Um, instead, we kind of got our Gift of the Ox, was reworked a little bit since Multi-Strike's going away. Remember that whole thing? Multi-Strike, right. gone. Bye-bye, Multi-Strike. By multi-strike, yep. we will miss you, Crit 2.0. Um, 
So now he, your main healing, so far as we know right now, before talents or anything, is going to come from uh, Gift of the Ox Orbs. And the chance to summon these after each hit, because it's based on if you take damage, you have a chance to summon it. This increases as your health gets lower and lower and lower. We don't have exact numbers for what the percentage chance is. Just understand that as your health gets lower, they should spawn more frequently. Yep. Um, and they heal for 25% of your max health, which is, that's pretty, big. pretty significant. Yeah. That's a pretty good size heal. Uh, I don't know if it'll help us be super self-sufficient or anything, but that's a tanking model thing. Uh, and I'm kind of like leaving that alone, mostly <laughs> for fear of salt overdose. Um, now, all these things I've talked about are simply the defensive aspects of the Brewmaster, because you know, as much as I would love Keg Smash to say your opponent does 100% less damage, um, we do have a few little changes to our offensive toolkit. Um, now, you might have mentioned, remember I mentioned about the Brews, how they're on a charge cooldown. Mm -hmm. Their charge cooldown, as it stands now, is 20 seconds per charge. Uh, I think that's actually the same as roll off the top of my head. Uh, so your abilities, a lot of your offensive abilities, actually reduce the cooldown of these charges. So proper managing of them, once again, Keg Smash being the big one, is going to be huge for Brewmasters so uh, being able to defend themselves. Four seconds on that. Yep. Keg Smash is four. Tiger Palm is one. And Blackout Strike does not. That's, Blackout Strike is our filler, not kick. Strike. We're going to hit them with our weapon. Hmm. We're going to thwack them, they say. Not just hit, we're going to thwack. Thwack. Yeah. Um, thwack. So Keg Smash, basically the same ability. Tiger Palm, no longer an energyless filler. It's now 25 energy um, and just deals a little bit of minor damage. It's just going to be what we use to burn off energy while we wait for Keg Smash. Um, and that's also going to reduce the cooldown of our brews a little bit, which is nice. And then the big one, I actually, when I saw this, I, I, I jumped up and was really excited about this one. And I was at work when I saw it. Um, so I'm pretty sure some people at the casino looked at me weird. Breath of Fire, now important. <laughs> this is our yes. AOE. I don't have anything else to do, but so I'm going to do damage spell. Um, it's the same spell. Uh, you, I'm assuming they did away with the uh, Draenor talent, uh, but if they've been hit by Keg Smash and are affected by the slow, they burn. Shares a cooldown with Blackout Strikes. Uh, so you get to choose single target, AOA. It's, they share the same cooldown. And there's no energy but, cost, no chi cost, because nope. chi's gone, so you get a chi. You just, it's a three second cooldown. It is, yep. it is a filler spell. And we finally get to put uh, Breath of Fire back on our bar instead of it just being somewhere just for. You have a this tier. It's such a while cool talent. And it's, oh, like, wow. it's such a cool ability that would, it's sad that we never get to use it. It's, it is yeah. one of those things since Warcraft 3 that has been huge for the Brewmaster. I mean, I remember you Dizzying Haze, Breath of Fire, and that was amazing. And I'm really so, glad that such an iconic spell is coming back. It's so cool looking. Like, you just want to use it. Even now, you know it's bad for you, but you want to use it. Every time you see a big pack, you just, it's so cool looking. It's one of the uh, few animations Brewmasters still get on the mobile app, too. So, yeah. <laughs> I, want, uh, I don't know about the other races, too, but Pandas look awesome doing yeah. the Breath of Fire animation. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's a good sound, too. Yeah, it's very satisfying. Everything about that ability is great except the damage. So, but that should hopefully now not be an issue. Um, and then they kind of gave us an idea of what they're looking at talents. Um, and the Purifying Brew also grants up to 15% dodge for 6 seconds uh, based on level stagger purified. So they're kind, in a weird way, you kind of get a loose of brew back, but at a much smaller pit. Right. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll be curious to see. They were saying that you won't have rows, so we might see... I guess the only thing I can think of is similar to our 100 talent tier where you'll see a full-on offensive ability, a full-on defensive ability, and then uh, in between, that might be closer to roughly what we see, uh, but it's too early to tell. Uh, I'm, I'm interested to see what talents do, since that's what they've been saying, is, oh, you'll be able to customize it a lot with talents and artifacts. Right. So another thing that, that did come out, and this is going to apply to both Brewmaster and Mistweaver, 
Uh, finally, the Inve Invoke Shuen is no longer Invoke Shuen for anybody except for Windwalkers. So we get a cow. Yeah, I mean, Brewmaster ox. will get an ox. So uh, Invoke Nizhao, and uh, Mistweavers are going to get Invoke Chiji, the Red Crane. Yeah. So be interested to see. People, uh, go ahead. Uh, so people are curious why we don't get Invoke Yulon, and that's when they particularly said there's no Invoke Yulon. And that's because originally, when the class was being developed, or the spec was being developed, Chiji was the celestial that Mistweavers were kind of aligned to. Mm -hmm. And all the heels were red colored instead of green. Yeah, until and they, they did uh, spinning they poultry said, kick. Yeah, it didn't look good. Like you were murdering a bunch of chickens when you tried to heal people. <laughs> so they changed it off. But that's why it's, you know, Chiji is kind of like the hope thing. And healing's like, I hope we get through this stupid mechanic that we can't do anything but heal through. <laughs> So that's why we get Chiji and not Yulon. I was really hoping we'd get a Yulon, but in some form, like a damaged ability or something, but mm -hmm. whatever. What, yeah, when they make was, the fourth monk spec. Right. What was really interesting <laughs> was Celestial and I actually came out and said that they have nicknamed Invoked Chiji as Chiji Take the Wheel. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> oh my god. We broke it. <laughs> we'll be interesting uh, to see what that does. I want the Chiji from uh, that one fight in Tot. In Third of Thunder, where he's just like oh, a bunch just of chichis chichis just everywhere. Run, just yeah, like the murky everywhere. alt from Heroes, yeah. but, but with those, those did damage. So you, yeah, they, they did say a lot of heal. damage. Damn. Those things. Yeah, they need great. to heal this time. Yeah, I just want yeah. a million. It means you got you got to step into their path. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh so so that way the healing sphere thing where people have to step into them. Yeah. Have to keep that around somehow. <laughs> I'm so excited about the different celestials they're making their way into the. We get we get our special tiger. You guys get a big ox to do an ox thing. You guys get to, the crane looks really cool, but the tiger's ours. Yeah. Now, exciting. You have tiger. So, fine. You can have Tony the tiger. I'm gonna have Dave. I will have yeah. actual Dave. You'll have actual Not actual statue Dave. Dave. Living yeah. Dave. Dave. Invoke Dave. <laughs> Invoke <laughs> Dave. The, the crane ox. Invoke <laughs> Dave, spirit of the brewmaster. <laughs> Pretty much. So, the gameplay does, um, for brewmaster the Guard wasn't fit in the fantasy, so they toasted it. It's gone. Chi has been removed. It's gone. So instead, the focus is going to be on shared charges between multiple, abil multiple abilities will make every ability a relevant choice for the Brewmaster. So uh, like you said, LeBlue, the, the days of just spamming Serenity and just purifying nonstop, those are gone. You're actually going to have to make those are gone. conscious decisions gone, gone. about which brew to use to keep yourself alive. If you're purifying too often, you're not going to have iron skin up for that big hit coming in. And if you save it too much, you're going to die from stagger. So it's uh, they're actually giving there's choices. Definitely, there's a definitely a little bit of uh, potential for risk reward there. Um, and the charge system, and it's this isn't like actually unique to our class. You can see it in a couple of the other classes. Uh, Warrior and Paladin come to mind uh, with their active mitigation. So in, in a 30 second roughly tanking, you'll be able to actually have fairly high uptime on these abilities. Um, it's a little bit more interesting in our case because our charges is a smoothing mechanic and then removing the damage from what, that we're smoothing. Uh, so we'll see some balancing, a little bit of balancing act there of whether you want to clear your stagger or if you actually want to just live with it and let your healers heal through it and that'll kind of be one of those marks of a good brewmaster is mm -hmm. if you have a good one they'll know when they can clean it off and they don't need the massive stagger buff but if they're not so great they'll, their damage should still be relatively smooth it's just your healers might have to do a little bit of extra work um, so this is one of those little things thanks <laughs> You're welcome. Your hots you won't overheal. <laughs> Your hots won't overheal. Yay. No, they won't. You're right. <laughs> but it'll be a no fault of yours. <laughs> Unless GG's taking the bill. Um, so one of the so biggest concerns I, we that has been brought up about the Brewmaster uh, changes here is mastery. Uh, one of the biggest concerns is that this is still RNG mastery. Um, what are your thoughts it on is, that, Leblue? It's... I think I was, I touched on that. Um, in the end, it'll kind of be how big of a deal this is relative to the entire toolkit. We've gotten a couple base abilities, and I say couple base because I don't see Dave, I don't see Statue, so I'm assuming they just forgot that, and if that's gone, there will be riots in the streets. Mm -hmm. um, but if, 
if the toolkit itself is fairly robust, and this is kind of a nice thing, because it doesn't directly affect our active mitigation like it does for paladins and warriors and death knights. Um, so it's if it, but if our toolkit itself is robust enough, and this is just kind of thing, I won't be too concerned about it. Um, whereas right now, mastery is important. It, it's a very, very big mitigating tool, but this is could just end up being a nice thing to have. But I'm not writing it off as, oh, it's no big deal just yet. I'm kind of keeping my eye on it. Right. It's It, it seems to me that the mastery is more of a RNG lessener. Like the more mastery you have, the smoother you're going to be because you're going to be dodging more often. Uh, so it will not be as spiky um, of damage coming in. So right. it's... Uh, and Go ahead. I, I've, I've said, and I, I've talked with somebody who felt like the stagger mastery fits more into the fantasy yes. and i said earlier it does it, this still does but from a different angle when you say an erratic dodging you don't actually know when you're going to dodge not just virtue of oh well 25 percent of the time he'll dodge it's like well this time he dodged after getting hit once this time he dodged after getting hit three times in that aspect it does fulfill it the fantasy, the fantasy perfectly at that point yeah um, at, that, at that point and then you still have the stagger to, to cover you Right. So, yeah, is it getting hit by the abilities? It's like the the gameplay they're going for here. Getting hit by the melee, unless it's something like Felhari, not a huge deal, and it fits into the fantasy, smooths out your damage. So, mastery seems pretty cool. In a fight like Felhari, that could cause some problems because you're not going to have the charges of Iron Skin Brew to to mitigate as much as you need to. Um, that depends on the taunt timing. Uh, I, I'd actually say Velhari is probably a lesser issue of this. I would say a situation like Paragon to the Claxi, where you have a 20 stack uh, Locust Kalraz beating your face in while your co tank is still actively tanking something, uh, because you you can have higher uptimes while actively tanking the boss on traditional taunt swaps. Right. So. That it like it's it's something to be seen on multiple facets. There's a lot left there. Yeah. So o- then, overall, then, I think it fits the fantasy. It's it's pretty good. There is some room for concern. We'll have to see how the fights actually uh, filter out in this expansion. If whether or not it fits our toolkit or not, and we'll we'll just have to see. And uh, as you said, Dave, a riot, right? Yeah. Uh, and then just the the guard thing. I like guard. I think it just it became a crutch, and I understand why they removed it. I I don't think it was a bad idea because it kind of gave us something to help protect us against magic because that was our weakness for a very long time. Yes, um, that obviously is gone now that we can stagger fifty percent magic. So, hooray! Yep. Yeah, guard being gone just didn't fit the fantasy at all. So, there you go. All right, well, let's move into uh, Salt Weaver. I mean, Mist Weaver. All right. Oh, God. <laughs> Here it comes. <laughs> Here it is. All right, so the fantasy that they're going for now, I'm just going to fully admit it here, is different than the fantasy that they had before. So the fantasy they're shooting for this expansion is a mysterious healer that has mastery over the mists, allowing them to care for multiple people and sustain their healing efforts for a long time. So notice mm. it didn't have anything about being in melee. But good news, we'll go over the good news first. Hmm. Our mastery. No more healing spheres. Yay? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was like, That's, I was uh, expecting a cheer. I don't know. All right. No, the, the, the sound quality kind of dropped. I don't know if I'm lagging or anything, but uh, uh, so I was checking that. Hey, sorry. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's like such an upgrade. Yeah. Like, Incredibly so. So uh, and, and just s- having control, you know, being able to master your mastery right back at you. <laughs> uh, that's incredible. So I'm super excited. So that was one of the biggest things. Our first. mastery is called Gus of Mists. So what it does is your targeted heals also may cause a gust of healing mist, instantly healing the target for a minor amount, increasing from mastery from gear. Uh, so one thing to note here is this is not a percentage. Thing. No percentages come in whatsoever. So every time right. you do a targeted heal, you get a buff to that heal. Uh, well, a secondary heal comes out. So it's not like other masteries are like, well, you have a percentage chance for this to happen. This is dependable, and almost all of our abilities now are considered targeted, except for Soothing Mist, I think, is the major one. And 
Essence font, which is the new AOE. Oh, right, you know? that one's an AOE one. That's right. <clears throat> yeah, but I mean, the, 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 that was one of the big questions with this mastery was, was it percentage? Was it a flat amount? Because a flat amount is going to be so much more interesting than a percentage, uh, which I think we'll touch on a little bit later. Right. But yeah, it's a flat amount I'm excited for because you increase it, you know, and it it, it uh, affects your spell choices. It could affect your gearing. It's It's going to be, yeah, really good. And uh, Soothing Mist, this is one of the biggest changes. Uh, Soothing Mist has yeah. gone from your bar and is now a passive. So every time you cast a heal uh, for a Fuse, Enveloping Mist, and Vivify, they trigger Soothing Mist. And so all of a sudden, after you cast that, you will start doing your channel uh, on the person that you healed. And you'll channel healing into the target, heal them for minor amount every 0.5 seconds until you take another action. So you can just sit there and just get a constant hot, and I, it's free, it doesn't cost any mana, so you're just sitting there constantly healing. Um, and so this is an efficient heal, because you just cast a heal and let it go. Uh, if you need high throughput healing, you just ignore it and start casting your heal, move on to the next target, cast heal, things like that, and so you don't spend any time on Soothing Mist. Um, this is one thing that made me kind of concerned. As they said, for Mist Weavers, it's okay to have open GCDs between heals because Soothing Mist fills these, fills these gaps. And I was concerned. I'm like, so my point is to just cast a heal and sit there. I, I think they should not have said that, and it would have been fine. Right. I think when they say things like that, players interpret that in whatever ways, either the literal way or they try to apply their own kind of experiences to that comment. If they hadn't said that, no one would have thought twice about it. And I think the the comparison between like other healers, other healers do the same thing, uh, will do the same thing, I don't know, maybe. It's, Soothing Mist is supposed to be comparable to your like uh, Holy Light or your Healing Wave or your Heal. Things that are really slow, efficient heals that really are mana neutral or mana positive. And in Soothing Mist's case, it'll be you know 100% mana positive, it doesn't cost anything. Um, but the thing, uh, the, the reason I don't think it's going to be a big deal is that how often do healers right now spam these spells? You know, if you assume that, or you think that all you're going to be doing is cast a spell and channeling Soothing Mist on the target, then you're thinking that other healers are also just going to be casting like Heal over and over or Holy Light over and over. But they don't do that. There's you, you don't have situations where you're doing that. You're either doing damage in that time because damage is taken is really low. Or you're um, you're pumping out a lot of heals because damage is really high. There's rarely a situation where you just, except maybe in a dungeon, you know. But uh, there's rarely a situation where you're just casting over and over your little efficient heal that doesn't cost any mana. Right, and and psychologically, it's not uh, like the people are concerned. It's like, oh, I'm just going to cast and sit there and let who the, see the miss do its thing. But psychologically, you're going to be channeling just like you are now. Um, with Soothing Mist, it's like you're actually casting a channel, even though you're not, but psychologically, it looks like you're doing something, so it's going to kind of fill in those gaps um, a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, There's a minor concern on the uh, the fact that it's a channel, and, you know, it's not just like a hot, is uh, can it be interrupted? Uh, so, like, this is kind of a PvP concern. Right. Um, so if you cast a, a fuse, and you got it off, just barely got it off, but then you immediately start channeling Soothing Mist, if that's interruptible, then you just got screwed over by your mastery. Now you're locked out for X seconds, you know, uh, just because this mastery you can't do anything about. Right. Uh, I think the plan is to have it channel, like, indefinitely, cost no mana, and not be interruptible. Uh, right we'll now, they they want it to... Um, right now, it's not interruptible. What they're talking about is, right. is doing it so, uh, A, there's going to be a talent to allow you to move all casting, uh, oh, and okay. B for interrupts, they're thinking about doing with an interrupt with a physical school. So that way, if you get interrupted, you can still cast your other nature things and don't get locked out. Oh, I do remember seeing something like that. Yeah. That makes sense. That's, that's fine then. Just to, so that people could stop the heal if they want to, but you know, it doesn't lock it's you out. It's not going to lock you out everything. for a long time. Yeah. yeah, that's good. So they're completely changing our toolkit for Serpent Stance, essentially. Um, yes. We're getting a new uh, ability called a Fuse. Uh, which is going to be your fast and efficient heal. Um, enveloping Mist is staying around, but this one's actually going to have a cast time now. There's no more channeling with Soothing Mist and getting instant heals going out. That's gone. Um, but Enveloping Mist is pretty much staying the same. It's going to do a, a large HOT and increase healing received by other spells by 30%. Uh, renewing Mist... That's all spells now, yes. not just Soothing. That's right. all spells. All healing. Mm, really good. Yep. 
So renewing miss is getting a rework as well. So it's it's going to go out to only one target, and it's going to be a very, they say a large, no, a huge amount of health over 20 huge. seconds. Um, this much. The second that it goes to uh, overheals, it will mm -hmm. jump. It will move to another target that's injured. Uh, to the most injured ally within 20 yards. So it will actually leave the first target, go to the next target. Huh. Yeah, so it maintains the jump mechanic that it has now. It's just uh, relevant now uh, right. when it jumps. So it doesn't uh, overheal. That's what kind of the comment I made about Le Blue earlier, right. is that our only hot is not going to overheal. I guess it's not our only hot, technically. But um, Yeah, so let's start with Fuse. Like, that's a, it's just a simple spell, right? It's a quick cast does just a small amount of healing and uh, doesn't cost a whole lot of mana. I see this spell, you know, kind of look at the spells and how we're going to use them, not just look at them as spells. So I see a fuse as like our mastery slash soothing mist starter. You know, if you gear for a lot of mastery, meaning that on target heal, heal is going to be really high, a fuse is a great way to proc that. You know, you mm -hmm. may have a play style that's completely centered around proccing your mastery as much as possible, and a fuse would be really great with that. And like I said, for soothing mist as well, it's a great starter for that. Um, I love Enveloping Mist. I, that's still, I love that spell now, and I'm going to probably enjoy it then. Um, there's a lot of really good combos that you're going to be able to do with Enveloping Mist, like uh, Renewing Mist with the, uh, the proc chance to increase your Vivify, and then you Vivify an Enveloping Mist target, and it does just a bunch of healing. That's going to be really exciting. Yep. Um, yeah, that's another thing we didn't mention is that with Renewing Mist, uh, it has a 4% chance to increase the healing of your next Vivify, which we haven't yeah, gone yeah. over, by 50%, and that's every time it heals, every, every tick you'll have that, that chance. So the, the biggest thing with these spells, uh, Rem in particular, is uh, it re Renewing Mist never felt good in a dungeon. It never felt good in PvP. It was always just this worthless button I had. I felt like it just did absolutely nothing. I know from the math that right now you cast for doing this and it jumps to three targets. If it does a lot of healing, or if it does like all its healing, doesn't overheal a lot, it, it actually is a significant amount of healing, you know, comparable to a rejuve or renew. Mm -hmm. um, the problem is that, you know, those three people don't always need the same healing. Hots are targeted things. You want to heal the people you want to heal. And so with Rem being now a strong hot, like a rejuve or a renew, you know, maybe even stronger than those, um, I'm definitely going to see some better gameplay in dungeons and in PvP, which is right. something I really think Mistweepers were, you know, kind of weak at uh, compared to the rest of the healers. Mm. So let's talk about Essence Font, one of our new spells Let's... as well. This one I am really wanting to see the animation for, because what it's going to do oh, is yeah, yeah, yeah. unleash a rapid twirl of healing bolts at up to six allies within 25 yards. Every one second for three seconds. So you're going to have these three <laughs> pulses of healing bolts going out to random allies and so I'm, this animation is going to be either really disappointing or incredibly awesome and when well, we've seen yeah, we've seen the bolts right and there was a, a set bonus somewhere it was like uh, I think when you ram healed it had a chance to send a missed bolt that out. Was, uh, I don't remember tier siege yeah that was siege tier four piece yeah um, and that was cool looking I guess it was neat to see them fly out but it's how you send them out is going to be interesting. I wonder if they're going to keep like the spinning crane kick, you know, kind of uh, animation, mm -hmm. and then from that you just like kicking out these bolts, you know, and just shooting them at your your friends yeah, or something. So I don't know. Each bolt is going to heal uh, the target for a decent amount, and then it's also going to include a uh, hot, an eight second hot on that. So that's yeah. going to be pretty interesting. That's our yeah. AOE heal. Um, it's a channeled one for three seconds. Uh, Vivify <coughs> is our final new spell that we've seen, uh, and this one is going to cause a surge of invigorating mists around the target, healing them and their two nearest injured allies for moderate around. So we get a cleave yes. heal, a positional really cleave heal. Yeah, I mean it's essentially mm -hmm. chain heal or circle of healing, but it, it's cooler because it's right. a monk ability, Agreed. of course. <laughs> uh, and remember, we had that renewing mist four percent chance to proc to make you vivify heal for fifty percent more. Um, and if you can get that, toss out an enveloping mist with the proc on Vivify, Vivify that enveloping mist target, that's going to be just huge amounts of healing. You've got a 50% modifier and a 30% modifier, and I don't know how much it says, a, what, a moderate amount on this? I don't know what that yeah. means, but, yeah. you know, that's... I definitely see some, a lot of... Even in this very basic toolkit, there's depth, you know, so 
once we get the talents and stuff, I, I expect to see a lot more depth that people think are going to be we're going to be lacking because of something we'll talk about right. in a moment, I suppose. And so we've gone over the new stuff. We've gone over the cool stuff. We're really looking forward to this kind yeah. of toolkit. Now let's go over the stuff that's making the internet cry. Uh, Monty, gone. Uh, there will <gasps> be a talent for mana regeneration, they say. Uh, statue, mm. gone. Uh, there will be a talent for a statue ability. So it's not gone, gone, but <laughs> down your base kit. Yeah. Uh, and we're no longer immune to ranged mechanics. Yeah. And that's a shy. How could that's we not topic fist weave? Too. Yeah. So how do we oh, fist yeah, weave for... with that? Yeah. Fist weaving gone. Yeah, good, good question. What? Fist weaving is gone. Yeah, he said it. I didn't words. say it. Yes. This guy, he said it. I didn't. <laughs> you didn't hear those words coming out of my so, mouth. Just explodes. Yes. Um, so the question mm -hmm. came up: Why does discipline priests get our niche? Why do they get to do the DPS to healing switch and not us? They did address this. They says because discipline has an option to go to 100% heals with holy specs. So they have two healing specs. Mistweaver does not have that option. And that's the reason why they they give it to them and not not us. I have a theory about this. I think it's because they're trying to test this out. Because discipline, if you're if you go discipline into a fight, you do not have the option to go 100% heals in that fight. You have to be very specifically right. set at that where the mistweaver with the fist weaving you had the choice to bounce back and forth and so they're trying this out they want to see how good that can be how relevant it is whether people actually play discipline or whether they stick with holy the whole time and i have a feeling and they have addressed this as well they said we love these type of mechanics we like fist weaving this is it's really cool but it doesn't fit with what we're doing right now Come seven or eight point oh, I fully expect if discipline works out, if everything plays well, it can be balanced. I do expect us to have a fourth spec, a fist weaving right. spec. But players, are, a lot of players are wondering, or maybe just the loud ones, I don't know, <laughs> are wondering why not just give monks the spec now? We already have this mechanic essentially. I mean, we don't have the new disc mechanic. That's something completely new. Yeah, that's completely. We, we do not have that. Enough. What we have now is smart healing, and it's boring. It's just that it, it, you do damage, and the healing is irrelevant. But anyway, so, you know, why not give monks a fourth spec? Why not give Fist Weaving the, the Gladiator Stance, you know, treatment? Uh, if you're going to do a damage to healing conversion, why give it to Discipline? And there's a lot of, fast, uh, uh, a lot of things going on here. Uh, first off, it, I want to kind of go on a soapbox about this, because this is a really important issue, and this was uh, a big thing. Um, you know, what's the pro biggest problem in healing right now in the game? It, it's it's absorbs, right? Absorbs are just so, depending on what side you're on, annoying or you know really really strong. And uh, everyone recognizes this, and even Blizzard recognizes that. Okay, look, we have to do something with discipline. Absorbs are out of control, so we're just gonna tear apart discipline, start from the ground up, and uh, that leaves this you know blank slate of a spec that they can just do anything with. And then you have monks with fist sweeping, which is proven, you know, in, as it always has been, impossible to balance. So I wish them luck with the new discipline, um, because we've seen that this is really, really difficult to balance. But, you know, we have monks with this really awkward mechanic that's, you know, as they say, is unintuitive. Uh, it adds far too much complexity and not enough depth to the class, I don't think. I think it adds complexity, but not depth. And it was optimal, but boring. New players didn't want to do it. They were kind of scared of it. There were a lot of players that don't want to play monk because they just afraid they, they'll never understand when and how to use fist weaving. Uh, so the devs, uh, this is how I saw the conversation or the thought process going down. It's like, we got this blank slate with discipline. We've got this awkward mechanic, but we kind of want to keep the idea in monks. Why not we just build the spec around discipline? That way we don't have to generate a whole new fourth spec with new spells, a new fantasy, and a new idea. Um, and, uh, you know, just put it in discipline. And like Chai said, if it works, great. And we'll hopefully they'll bring it back. I think they really want to bring it back. Uh, like you said, you know, they they love the mechanic and it's an interesting idea. I too expect it to be a fourth spec uh, in a future patch. Just probably not this expansion. I think it's really important that they don't try to do discipline and fist weaving at the same time because they'd have to be very different, and it just would be way too difficult to balance. You know, it'd just be really awful to balance. Um, so. 
you know, I'm, I'm sad that people lost fist weaving. People that liked fist weaving lost it. I, that really, that really sucks. But uh, for me, I didn't. Re I'm not gonna miss it. So <laughs> I just. So I used it for what it was. It was a tool, right? Yeah, it was a mono regen tool and incredibly powerful right. at that. So that was one of the Extremely. biggest problems. So one of the things we're hearing a lot in the community, and I, I, I reached out for feedback from a lot of monks, and I'm hearing this a mm -hmm. lot. This was is not the fantasy they quote-unquote sold yes. us when it came out. And Mistweaver was one of the ones that really grabbed a lot of people's attention when they came out mm -hmm. at BlizzCon 2012. And they said... Mm -hmm. The Mistweaver is going to do damage to heal, and it's going to do melee damage yeah. to heal. And that was something that brought a lot of people to the class. And to those people, I say, I'm sorry. It's, Hi, I'm one of those people. Right. That's why I rolled the monk to well, begin I don't, with. I don't think anyone's denying, and I'm talking to the like, community here, I don't think anyone's denying that that was the, the fantasy that mm -hmm. was sold to people. Like, this it was, but that's not what the class has become or the spec has become. You know, they had that. They had that at the beginning. They kind of worked like that. But, you know, over time, they started being pushed more slowly towards a more healing role and less of a damage role. They still maintain those, uh, you know, that kind of essence of melee damager does healing. And in uh, Wad, we saw that. You know, you had Crane Stance, which seemed nice, but, you know, it had its problems, which we discussed earlier. But, um, you know, it's... Not everybody picked up a monk because of that. I didn't start playing monk because I wanted to be a melee healer. I picked up a monk because I saw Soothing Mist. I was like, that's cool. I want to use that. I played a monk because of Soothing Mist. Like That's the <laughs> weirdest reason to play a that monk. Nobody weird, likes yeah. Soothing Mist. First been, and only monk to ever admit to that. I There's like it. There's been that two sides of it, though, for like years now, I guess, at this point. There's yeah, been the sure. ones who are like, I just want to sit in range and I want to heal. Mm -hmm. There's the other half that's like, well, I want to sit in melee and do damage to heal, which are the two extremes. Yeah. And for yep. years, you tell the two extremes, you're both wrong. And there's a there's a very nice point in the middle. And like you yeah. said, Monkey, that's been pushed slowly more and more towards yeah. the, well, you want to do more actual healing, guys. But it's never right. been totally gone. Yep. That's what the, the only t exception model. was like, was damage modifiers, right. like Gore Fiend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you could really do a lot of uh, a lot of healing with a uh, with Gorfine type stuff but that was kind of the 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 toolkit that they were building for world uh, for warlords of draenor is that a good monk will know when to switch in and out of stances <laughs> and you should never be in the same stance the whole time um and i really kind of like that play style i'm going to miss that but i'm looking at our new toolkit and going that looks really fun actually <laughs> So right, it helps. Yeah. It helps address the two two really big problems. One, their weakness in small group content. Yes, um, which really is blaringly obvious in challenge yeah. modes. Oh, uh, it's pain. And then the other one is it's a relatively hard spec to pick up for new players. Yep. And it's, it's it. I I will never say that I am happy to see fist weaving gone, but I can understand the point, the position they're coming from, and why the yep. changes were made, even if they yep. make me a very sad right. panda. And I, I'm not going to fault anybody that. for if they came to Mistweaver because they love that fantasy and they've changed the fantasy on you. I'm not going to blame you for picking a different spec of Monk or leaving the class altogether. Um, I, I wish you wouldn't. We, we love you in the community. Please, please stay with us. But if, you know, rest, if rest of Druid looks more fun to you, Shaman looks more fun to you to heal, Disc Priest looks more Holy fun Priest. to you. No one plays Holy Priest. Holy yeah, Priest, that, yeah, that damage to healing mechanic is still there in Discord. Right. And if you like that, yep. give play it and give feedback on it and tell them how you would, you know, kind of like to see this in a melee version. You know, because right. they start gathering feedback really early. Believe it or not, they do listen to your feedback. Um, and it's important to, to give that feedback to them. Don't give feedback in these private channels where nobody's listening except each other. You know, if you're just like in an echo chamber and you're just listening to each other say the same things over and over, that's not reaching the ears of people who actually could do something about it. So, right. you know, my echo chamber is warm and comfy. I'm sure it is. <laughs> that talking, my echo chamber. The salt echo? I didn't think it did. I didn't think it had a lot of uh, echo. <laughs> salt mines echo. Absorbing, salt, yeah. salt, yeah. salt mines. Echo. Salt mines. Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, so one of the other problems that a lot of people are having with this change is the fact that we asked about DPS. So. Every oh, healer yeah. is supposed to have some form of DPS in order to, to fill time or questing, soloing, things like that. <laughs> uh, we lost our immunity to ranged mechanics. However, 
almost all of our DPS abilities that they have indicated so far are melee. Uh, we also have a talent that they came out yep. with called Mistwalk that will instantly dash to an ally and heal them for a large amount. However, this is going to be risky to use in most situations because if you charge into melee to heal the tank, you get targeted by a range mechanic, but by melee. Um, our, we asked them, well, what about in situations where it's dangerous to be in melee? And their answer was, well, clack, Crackling J Lightning's still there. Uh, uh, it's Better hit uh, like a truck. Uh, lightning, <laughs> y'all! So that melee protection we've enjoyed, you know, this expansion, able to sit in melee and basically ignore the vast majority of mechanics on bosses, was nice. But it also like hurts you when you go to play some other class right. that has to do those mechanics. Every and time I'm I go to my like restaurant, doing... Druid, I was like, uh, uh, "Why am I dead?" Awful. It's almost embarrassing because you know I played a monk all through heroic and all through mythic progression, and I'm like this big boy mythic raider, and I go do like a heroic pug, and I'm like, "What does this boss do exactly?" I don't know. I'm like on my druid, and I just like I don't know what this mechanic is. So you can explain that to me. That'd be great. <laughs> um, but you know. Removing that protection, that's huge. Mm -hmm. That's a significant step. And I do not think that we can have a melee DPS setup without that protection. Right. Um, it's possible that they could balance Crackling Jade Lightning so that it's, you know, just a little bit weaker than the melee version so that you still have that depth to know when you can go in and do melee mm -hmm. DPS. And it is a game, maybe, um, because you have to stop healing spend time getting in the melee somehow, and then do your DPS. Hopefully there's no setup like there is now. We know there's no tiger power, but we don't know if there's, there's like crane no, zeal. There's no chi, um, so you're not going to... Yeah. That's another thing. Mistweavers right. don't have chi. Uh, yeah, purely that, mana-based. So you're not oh. going to have to build up to do Rising Sun Kick. Uh, Pool of Mess right. is most likely gone, so we're only going to have one charge of Rising Sun Kick if we even have it. <laughs> they may take that away yeah. and just give us Blackout what? Kick and, uh, and Tiger Palm. That We mm -hmm. may just have two melee abilities, and that would be kind of boring. Uh, we'll I would just see. kind of prefer like a new DPS setup for fully ranged. If they're going to like destroy the melee healer does damage and does healing thing then just go all the way with you it you want to be like just, full on dragon ball z like just yeah just key waves always a good and idea. Kind of and stuff. there's been some really i put out a question to because that was a big issue for me because I, I like to dps as a healer i think that's one of the most important aspects of a healer is when you're not healing don't just be doing nothing be doing damage and if you can't do damage safely as a monk that's going to be really boring um and there's been some really good suggestions for people saying, like, give us some kind of a dot that generates, like, chi orbs in the target and then use detonate chi, which we haven't used all expansion. You would blow up those orbs and it does, like, single target or AoE damage, like, like Fist of Fury, and then use Crackling J Lightning as a filler. Uh, other people have suggested, and that keeps, like, the chi still there because I know a lot of people are missing chi already. Um, so it keeps chi kind of in the fantasy of the spec. And then other people have suggested going with a more mist weaving side of the fantasy where... Not only do they have control over, you know, beneficial miss, but also like, you know, harmful miss. So you mm -hmm. could do things like a, a dot mist, or you know, change crackling J lightning to a offensive soothing mist, or like a choking mist, yeah, or some strangulation know. type thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, this mist, it's hurtful. We already have but force this... lightning. We might as well have force choke. Yeah, somebody said they wanted yeah. the uh, AOE lightning from proving grounds. You know, like the the NPC has. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, That'd That's cool. that would kill for I, I want to see our re that the original chi torpedo. I want to see that back, where he actually sent out a torpedo of of um, chi, just like Basically a chi burst yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. I hope another, another chi burst. <laughs> I think that topic, that ranged or melee DPS topic, is still up for debate and development. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely give your feedback to that. Yeah. You know, tweet at Warcraft devs. Go in the official forums. Don't be posting stuff in places they can't see it. You know, it's good to do that to kind of, you know, get ideas and scroll together yeah. ideas. Yeah, and kind of have a cohesive thought about it. But then you have to post it to where devs can see it because right. that's and yeah. and don't complain about paladins being melee healers because they still have don't have that range mechanic community. I still haven't found cheating, where that's they're been cheating confirmed. with beacons. They're uh, cheating. I would with say, beacons. as far as we know, that's that they won't have it. But it's not. Let's say it's not been confirmed. Yeah, so it, we can't they have, they're they definitely have, hinting at beacon, it, but they so. haven't confirmed one way or another. Yeah. So we'll it's see. just confusing, the things they say. So yeah. Yeah. we'll see mm -hmm. as the 
beta comes out, you know. And, we'll and one final thing to tap off uh, everything we've learned in the class preview and the tweets. Spinning Fire Blossom. Remember that thing? <laughs> it's coming back. Thing. Woo! Right. Yeah. In PvP. Hooray. Yay. <laughs> so it looks Yay. like we're going to have a lot of new talents and stuff in PvP. What about so, the yeah. path? I want path. Oh, path that, yeah, the, the, the oh, Fire Blossom no, path. You don't want that. Yeah. I want my penis drawing tool. I mean, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Typical. Oh man. All right. So mm. if there are any questions oh, yeah. on the dojo, feel free to to bring those up. Um, and so, are there any uh, any community based things you guys uh, experience at BlizzCon you guys want to talk about? Um, well, see, convert to raid. Um, they they put on uh, their own party. You know, um, you know, party. we had the curse party. We had the the, the calm before the storm by party. our our owners owners um, D twenty, which is really really cool. So that was neat. But yeah, the well played party was really neat. Um, getting a lot of the CTR people around. And anybody else who wanted to join in, um, so we had a lot of people there for the five four or five hours that the party went on. A lot of the devs stopped by to say hello, which is really neat. Um, so yeah, that was just a really good time to to see people, meet people. Uh, Monkey O got you know, put on the live stream for a while, I believe. Oh, yeah, Cuddles um, put me on there. Yeah, Cuddles, the monk bit. brother Cuddles. <laughs> yeah, it's um, nice to meet him. So, you know, he, from the, from, I think, is he on the Game the Game, game Case, case podcast? The game and, Case, And he's also yeah. on the Converted now as well. And the Converted now, yeah. So it was, it was um, neat to, to just see all these community events, you know, the different parties, the different panels at Calm Before the Storm. Um, and, yeah, you know, getting able to say hello to, to Just Wait. And, and yeah, just go and others. That was cool. That's it, because he talks a lot. He likes to talk. <laughs> He's a talker. I love the guy. He's so, so fun. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Cold Knight asks in the dojo um, if the devs mentioned they wanted to move away from Expel Harm for Brewmasters. Is it removed? Uh, we talked about this earlier, but yes, Expel Harm is gone. Uh, they've baked it into the uh, orbs, so the orbs have now healed for 25% of your health, uh, and they'll have more of a chance to spawn as you uh, go lower in health. Um, so they are moving away from that. We don't know the, the fate of Expel Harm as it comes for Mistweavers and Windwalkers. I, could, mm -hmm. I don't see any reason to have it for, for Mistweaver anymore. Yeah. Please be gone. Uh, and honestly, Windwalker, I don't know if it's, it's, does it fit, really? I mean, no, not really. It yeah. never did fit. What is it like? Yeah, what know. does that mean? Expel harm. Like, I mean, I get the words. Well, I understand it's, the it's words. It's a cheat like, thing, you know. You drink your, you it... drink your special like detoxifying juice, and you go to sit in the toilet for six hours. You've expelled the harm, right? Like, who came up with that ability though? Like, I right, got this ability. What do you want it to do? I don't know. Do some little bit of healing and a little bit of damage. Is that it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could oh, be. It could right. be like twenty percent of your health pool sometimes if it's scaled properly. If it's critted, I mean. Yeah, I see a question, question from Rizzo in the dojo. Yeah, it's a very important Rizzo question. Asks, uh, hey, Air, did you ask a question in Dev Talk? Yes, I did. Okay, moving <laughs> on. <laughs> no, no, it was it was cool. I got to, you know, I, I the problem was is I wanted I meant to ask about Star Wars and Fire and the mastery at that time. Mm. And, and you forgot I, one of those. I was I was I was a little bit nervous. Panicked. Oh. A little bit of panicked. Too. I your Monkeo, eyes grew big in anime. was sitting right in front of me, and I, he was like looking at me, like laughing, staring at, at me, sweating like, <laughs> mess up, me. and it's just like, um, I'm a, 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 storm of the fire. Storm of fire. And I was not doing these things, by the way. I was. This is a lie. <laughs> um, no, but yeah. So it was good, and then it, it, um, it was good to later on talk to them about certain things and now that everything's public it's good to be able to talk about it as well right. too now one thing i did want to talk about storm earth and fire i missed it earlier is there is still confusion and we don't know and we won't know until beta but the way that it's worded indicates that each spirit is going to do 50 percent of your damage and that indicates that you are going to be a spirit as well so if you go into a two target situation the only benefit is that you're doing damage to two different mobs in two different places that's the only benefit. Otherwise, it'd be 100% damage. So there's still mm. some confusion. If it's only beneficial yeah. at a, a three target, um, we don't know yet. Uh, I know Callie and Hina both had different interpretations of how this is mm -hmm. going to work. So until we get beta, we're not going to have any idea. Yeah. And Muldoni in the dojo. Let's see. Thank you for thank you for enjoying the show, Muldoni. But um, um. You're asking, how do we think demon hunters will affect monks in PvP one-on-one? -on -one? 
And I'm going to add in, how about monks in the game as a whole? So yeah, it's, well, we're all re-rolling, right? First, first one is, PV, no. is PvP. Does anybody understand? Uh, uh, we, uh, um, we don't know how vengeance works yet. I'll be a hypothetical so. person, so yeah, why not? It might, might, yeah. I mean, sadly, we don't do a lot of PvP, um, yeah. uh, Muldooney. But um, one versus one, I hear that's something that nobody ever balances for. That's what the devs always say. But it's gonna be cool because there'll be like dancing because you have like the the demon hunters doing their little charge thing, and monks we will be like rolling around in transcendence. And yeah. Like they'll literally be dancing around each other. I I think that demon hunters might fill a similar niche to when Walker monks are being incredibly mobile melee. You can like <laughs> capture points though. And, uh, you know, monkey, you got to play the demon hunter. Um, I didn't play it. Though. Oh, you didn't? I didn't. So I'm not interested at all in okay. Demon Hunters, yeah. except for when you know they did the the wall panel. Yep. And they said that Demon Hunters get this 10 minute BS cooldown that gives them like a billion percent increased damage and a hundred percent leech. And I was so like, so useful nope, army of the dead. Not that. Let's not do that. I don't want to fight that. All right. So <laughs> was I was awful. able to spend um, a time to play with the entire starting zone because there was nobody else in line to do it um, at the time. And yeah, the Demon Hunter, it's Pretty fun. I mean, they're they're extremely fast. Um, just you know, they have a double. The double jump is really neat because in addition to the double jump, you hit spacebar one more time, and then you your wings pop out and you glide. I and saw. No I was real cool so on that. salty when I saw that. I'm like, so wait, <laughs> demon hunters not only get double jump, but they get to take our roll ability, but it's in midair. F you guys. But, but it, it doesn't necessarily move them forward though. Right. Like it, it'll 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 sl- it's like a it's like a miniature slow fall. So Chai, they'll be able get to mad about their die. amazing mobility. Just remember, they have to do their little demon charge off the cliff, then glide. Right. I mean, it, it was then very very fast, fast for that reason, which is neat. The far sight thing where you can see through everything and see all the enemies, kind of cool. Um, oh, but- I I was talking to uh, I think it was Reek Glitch about this. Um, I would love to kind of take that ability. And give it to the Mistweavers and make us a purely positional healer. Like, oh god, I would love a UI. <laughs> oh, please, don't do this to me. <laughs> I would love a UI where it's like I get to see the the health aura of everybody in my party and know it's like, oh, well, I need to be over here to do the splash heals and stuff like that. Instead of like, because right now you have <laughs> your bars, you know what their what their health is on their bars, but you have no idea where they relate positionally hey, unless you have you big try, ass. Try to kind of do that. There's this game called Wild Star. Shut up. The same thing. Shut up. You can go play that, man. <laughs> Take um, that stuff out of my game. <laughs> when you're playing, you're I, I uh, like last touch on the PV, the PVP 1v1 thing, something that kind of came to mind. I'm interested to see how much self-sustain they have because if monks maintain a relatively similar amount of self-sustain, they would be able to heal themselves more effectively. Yeah. I think. But the thing is, that, that's uh, something that came to mind because monks do have a good bit. A demon hunter jumping can still melee stuff on the ground. So we can still melee them. Well, but we don't know about the other way around. Mm. Uh-huh. But the fact that they can double jump over your head while meleeing you, we don't yeah. know if the range will work the other way around. But anything you're able to do in the in the air at the time, it seemed like you were able to do it on the ground as well. And okay, <laughs> I'm kind of curious anyway, how the jump stuff works because like. It's kind of a technical point, but you know when you jump right now in game, the game takes a snapshot of your position yes. as you jump, and it doesn't update it until you land. I don't know if the demon hunters are the same way; like they wait till they land, yeah. or so when they do, do the, the second jump. jump you're oh, so get you double jump, yeah, and a glide. Yeah. It's, it's you, you can like stun or something while they're in the air from the position they jump from. You know, and it still hits them. And I don't every know. demon hunter will just falling. get killed in any sort of yeah. cleave, uh, <laughs> cleave thing. They're like, oh, jump, jump, oh, I'm dead. I'm like 15 You're, feet away. I'm confused. You, you can jump, glide, jump, glide, glide, glide. You can do, and the, the glide will last for a couple seconds. But I, I recall you can pull it out multiple times, <laughs> with no cooldown. And I mean, so, who doesn't want that? How how much do we think that Demon Hunter is actually going to cannibalize Brewmaster and, and Windwalkers? What effect? According is it to Brewmaster, it's too early to tell. Yeah. Uh, I think Windwalkers were losing some to it, though. I, yeah. I think that's ine- inevitable. It is another agile, fast-moving melee, melee class. leather class. Yeah. If you were looking for the fast, agile melee class, I think, in the end, Demon Hunters will fulfill that better than Monks currently do. Plus, they're shirtless, and everyone loves shirtless <laughs> DPS. Yes. 
man. Monks would just be running around with the pants off. Like, all right, we got this. Now, the one thing, though, is people talked about the, the, the animations as well for the Demon Hunter. are really well polished. The stuff oh, you're yeah. doing looks amazing. Luckily, that is going to be uh, transferring to all melee classes. Right. Um, one of the things that came out, I don't know if it was said at the, one of the panels or a tweet, but they said that they are working on all of the melee animations in the game to make them a lot more apparent, a lot more good, as you know, gooder. They're making them gooder than they were. <laughs> well and said. Yes. Let's see, yes. we had another question in the dojo. Rizzo asks, uh, Blue Post said healers are going to get cleave abilities. Uh, do you think that means Mistweaver also is going to get it? And yes, we can already uh, we already see one of them called Vivify, and we have other abilities that um, will buff that up. Uh, so Vivify will hit a target and then splash out the two injured allies next to it. I do expect we're mean? going to have other uh, talents as well that will cleave um, cleave heal. So that is a thing now. We're going to be like redoing all this again when we get talents, even if they're yeah. initial iterations, because that's what it's, talents and artifacts are going to be huge. I think. Yeah, they are. Is Rizzo referring to DPS though? Because I know there's a tweet. If he's about, talking about DPS, all yeah. healers will be able to AOE. You know, well, I suppose. Uh, I'm not sure what we're doing with that, but. Oh, so oh yeah, is he asking um, about cleave? Uh... Cleave DPS abilities. That, I don't yeah. know. We haven't seen anything yet. Because like, we don't have spinning crane kick anymore, and melee is really difficult. That's why I'm really, I hope we get like the proving grounds, like, you know, Sith Lord, right. shit, lightning. Lightning, everything. <laughs> Let yeah. the chi flow through you. you know, it's it's uh, going to be great. So Cold Hurricane Knight. heals. <laughs> uh, Cold Knight wants to bring up the, uh, why did they only show off four Windwalker artifact weapons instead of the five shown on every other thing? I just don't think mm. they've got the art ready for the other one. Possibly he not. probably just yeah. ran out of art space on the thing and too. Time. You know, Mistweaver was shown first. Right. Yeah, well, why they gotta you... go rip Zwen's head off and put it on <laughs> your face. Right. What they're gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, one thing community based I wanted uh, to indicate is now we have a Discord server up for the Peak of Serenity. Uh, so Discord is kind of like a, a group chat thing, but also has voice capabilities. So it's kind of like a mumble and a group me combined. Uh, so we've been uh, pasting out invite links on Twitter. Um, I'll go ahead and put a link in the show note as well. So if you're interested in joining, you just join on up, and we've got uh, you know one for each of the specs, a general chat, things like that. So it's very active, lots of people in there, so, so come join. And you can make it look like IRC, but it's a lot easier to use than IRC. Yeah. So yeah. that's why it's becoming popular. And yeah, it's neat. It's um, a good place. It's still called the Peak of Serenity. It's just been moved, you know, like our peak of center serenity might be moved. Right. If we ever find out where our class hall is, because yeah. yeah. nobody knows. Move mountains with chi. <laughs> nobody knows. So. All right. Well, if you have a uh, a team that is looking for a monk, we happen to know a few. You can reach out to us at show at monkmeditation dot com or on Twitter at monk underscore meditation. So let us know the the recruitment details, and we'll uh, we'll shout it out there. All right, guys. I think it's time to put the brew away. All right, so please raise on iTunes, Stitcher, subscribe on YouTube or on Twitch.tv. It really does help. And if you want to uh, help the show get even better and help it grow, you become our boss by going to patreon.com slash monkmeditation. You can help guide the future of the show and get some fun rewards along the way. Air, do you have anything to uh, to shout out? Yeah, I mean, shout, shout out to everybody who was able to think about BlizzCon, attend BlizzCon, watch BlizzCon, anybody who supported it or even didn't support it because any feeling is a good feeling. So... Yeah, thanks for everybody supporting the show all this time. <laughs> and after you know, after getting a chance to talk to some of the devs, um, getting to hear about the class, big shout out to these guys working on the class changes, working on the stuff because they really care about what we do, what they are working on. They, there's passion in their eyes, in their faces, in their words when you're able to actually speak to them and not just read dot points on MMOC. So big shout out to them for putting up with a lot of us and. We're really looking forward to seeing what happens in the region. All right, and Monkeyo. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd like to echo kind of Eric's point on the devs. You know, they just, they're so passionate about all this stuff. It's kind of a, it feels so different than what we saw in WAD, which was next to nothing. And now we see this, like, team who's just, like, ready to go. Like, yeah, we got a legion, woo! 
Um, but yeah, like I said, all the people we met at BlizzCon, if you came by and said hi, you know, uh, I know Joey, I remember, I, I won't forget Joey now, you know, thanks for stopping by Joey, we saw him a couple of times. Um, and just, you know, everyone who's being, uh, is giving good feedback now, because it's really important to do that. So if you're part of the group that's actually a group of people who are giving good, respectful feedback and not yelling at the devs, you know, thank you very much. We, I, I appreciate that. I hope you... You know, you get what you want, and I hope it goes well. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I want to give a shout out to all the monks in the Peak of Serenity for keeping me uh, entertained while I was watching the virtual ticket. Uh, it was a fun time. It, it was nice to be still part of the community even without being out there. Um, and a shout out to the devs for actually talking to us again. It was nice to actually have communication. Uh, Warcraft devs is being very communicative. Uh, Celestalon is tweeting out a lot. It's nice to see that again after the silence that was World of Draenor. So shout out to them. Keep it going. Keep it up. And uh, hopefully we can fix Mistweavers a little bit. All right, LeBlue? Uh, mine, mine's pretty generic. Shout out to the Monk community for mostly staying level-headed about everything, even <laughs> with the, the loss of fist weaving, yep. mostly. mostly. All right, Air, I, I see you have another one. Yeah, one more. Shout, shout out to Celeste Lump's hair. <laughs> 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 Only most of us, I think most of us can dream about looking that awesome with purple hair. Right. That is stellar. Is all I can say. That's one Sun, word. Sunnier stellar. can pull it off too. Yep. That's true. That's true. Yeah, all yeah, right. Yeah. As part of the Monk community, if you have a blog, website, or person you want to see in the show, reach out to us via email at show at monkmeditation.com. The Monk community is the best one of the World of Warcraft, even better than the stupid demon hunters. We want to showcase yeah. it. Yeah. Monk Yo, how can the dojo best reach us? Uh, all right, so uh, you can follow the show at, at Monk Meditation uh, on Twitter. Uh, you can follow Chai T at, at WildMonk. You can follow Air at Air Walker. You can follow myself at, at Monkio and LeBlue at, at Kagari LeBlue. All right, thank you all for listening. You can watch us live Monday, November 30th at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, midnight UTC at twitch.tv slash WildMonk. You can also visit monkmeditation.com for links to all the ways to watch and listen to the show. That will wrap up this episode of Monk Meditation. May your bruise be strong and your heart stronger. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Eh. Come on. Oh, no. I love the 20. There's Demon Baby. There's I was, Demon Baby. I was like baby. clicking it and it wasn't doing anything.